All righty, everybody. Thanks so much for coming by today and spending a couple hours with us. We do appreciate it. We've got a special, special guest, one of our all-time favorites here, coming back on by request. Our new guy, Nate, requested. We were like, Nate, if there's somebody you want to meet, I want to hear who it is so we can start talking to these people. And the first thing out of his mouth was, I want Wise Guy History to come. So here he is. Wow. Hello. Thank you. Thanks so excited me. you're here. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> You're very excited it's to have it's you lovely. Look, look, Nate's little face is lit up. It's lovely. It's right. like Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas. That's right. It is a. It's a very special to have you back. I do have this uh, unfortunate relationship with you. You were the guest that was supposed to come on the day that I had my cancer surgery, and so mm. um, I missed out. And then we never got you back for a long time, and blah blah blah. And so every time I think about this, I think about you. So. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry I made that connection. <laughs> That's a bad connection to make. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Rocky, if you're good man. luck or bad luck. Rocky. That's yeah, what you yeah. want to hear at 6 o'clock in yeah. the morning. Yeah, <laughs> I think about this. I think about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming out. We do appreciate it. we got a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about, for sure, for sure. Let's catch up with everyone and say hi. First of all, Rough Swordsman, how are you doing today, sir? Well, as we say over here, not too bad. Not too bad. It's been been a lovely day over here in Old Blighty. Sun is shining, you know, been shining, and uh, it's a bit like summer's here because it's uh, midsummer. Summer solstice was um, was it twenty first? Uh, I think it changes a day or so depending on the uh, on the did, date. Uh, so, did you go to Stonehenge to clean off the orange paint? I tell you, what, don't start me off. All right, two thousand years old. They've got a clue anyway. Don't, oh, yeah. don't just don't start me off. Okay. <laughs> no, it wash off in the rain, but there's. There's ancient, ancient sort of populations of very rare lichen there. Oh, yeah. well. You know, anyway, stop it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, apart from that, so I got my first, um, first part one of uh, Skies Above Britain out with uh, all the uh, uh, subscribers and the YouTubers that wanted to be involved. And luckily, luckily, nobody copped it. <clears throat> nobody went into the old. Uh, into the sea or anything like that. So uh, that was quite fun. We've had some good positive um, comments, people enjoying it because, you know, they, there's people from the chat here and YouTubers playing the game so they can all relate, you know, they all know the name. So it's quite, quite fun. And our look at subscribers to us. By the way, if you're not subscribers to us, please, we need all the help. We're struggling. Give us, struggling. Give, give us and a don't forget to hit that like button either. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that in a minute. Do the subscribe first. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then did that like button. Uh, Nate, welcome back. Thank Five you. months in, and you're taking a week off already. So that's right. Next that? week. Yep. Yeah, I will say that I had a really fun morning and afternoon because I played for the first time the War of the Ring. Oh, for the and first time. Wow. First time. Really enjoyed it. I I played I played Sauron, um, and uh, I lost. Uh, but I did take a Minas Tirith though. I, I wanted to take that at least, <laughs> but nice. yeah, it was fun. Nice. I, I, uh, I definitely want to play it again. It there's, it's very thematic. Mm. And, um, we had me and my friend Ryan from the other guy from the board game bunker uh, channel that we, we had it out, we were playing it and we also put the soundtrack on at the same time. So it was you know, very, very into yeah. the moment of Lord of the Rings. So it was awesome. It's it's an amazing atmospheric game because it's so big. You get all those miniatures, and oh yeah, uh, you really dive in. There's then there's, so three, I heard there's three expansions too. Yeah, yep. I've got them yeah. over behind me. Yep. That's I don't awesome. play with it. I've never played with. I oh, have maybe once, but the base game is so solid. Mm. I've never felt the need to add the expansions. Yeah. Yeah, and I just picked up the first edition for darn cheap. It was like twelve dollars or something for the first edition. Uh, it was crazy. I'm like, for $12, I'll get the first edition. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Anyways, Nate, what's going on? You, I mean, I put out a lot of content and a lot of people talk about how much content I keep, I put out. There's one guy that's keeping up with me. It's you. Holy <laughs> crap. Yeah. It's all because of Vassal. Like, because I've, I've just realized how quick and easy it is to play games by Vassal. I've still got games on my table. So I've got Operation Theseus set up now. But it just takes so long to set up and 
oh, you know, learn through the rules and punch counters and all that kind of stuff. And it's just vassal, like literally you open the file, load a scenario, ready to go like that. And it just kind of cuts out so much of the the background. I can just jump straight in. And I love that I can just, I love that. It's just made it so much easier to play games and, and record. And um, look, I'm really loving Simonich at the moment. So... Yeah, you uh, are going through mm -hmm. a phase of that, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's so easy to jump from one to the other. You know, I've gone, I went, was it North, uh, Salerno, and then I went Ardennes, and then North Africa, and now Stalingrad. And it's just so easy to make the jump between, you know, I'm playing four very different games with the was, one. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut yeah, you just the one, the one rule set, pretty much, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, with just different bits for each game, isn't it, really? Mm. Yeah. I was going to ask, I was curious to ask you about Salerno 43, because I remember watching on, I think it was your unboxing video that you mentioned that you've studied the Salerno landing. Yeah. You were curious, oh, we you weren't really sure if it was actually going to be a good game or not. Yep, that's my book on, it does feature Salerno. So I looked at the the mutiny at Salerno. Okay. Uh, there's a big British uh, mutiny, men mainly from the 50th and 51st Division, they were told, so they were over, where were they? North Africa. Uh, and they were told they were, they were uh, in a, com uh, they were in a um, hospital uh, recovery camp. And they were told they were going back to their units. And so they got on this boat thinking they were going back to rejoin their units in the 50th and 51st divisions. And then they arrived at Salerno. Halfway, halfway across the Mediterranean, they were told, by the oh, captain, uh, we'll, we'll be in Salerno in one hour. And, um, oh, like, oh. right. and they were furious and they arrived on the beach. And this is in the early days when uh, the reason they were sent there is to reinforce various units. And they mutinied. Biggest, one of the biggest British mutinies. Hmm. Rough, I don't know if you know much about that, but one of the biggest British, the, the biggest British mutiny of the Second World War. And so I looked at the huh. mutiny um, and kind of sought to explain why they mutinied. Yeah, and I argued that it wasn't actually a mutiny. They weren't rebelling against. They wanted to fight. They just didn't, wanted to return to their home units. That yeah. was the core of it. What happened to them? Uh, they were court-martialed. They were trialed. They were eventually. Most of them were sent to some pretty rough units in the Italian campaign. They were not. Mm -hmm. Most of them did not find their way back to their units. Um, they were very harshly they, dealt they with. They paid the price one way or the other, sort of thing. Yeah, it was pretty horrific. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, all their commanding officers had always told them to fight to get your way back to your units, don't leave, because this is a Tyne and Tees in the 51st Highland Division, and they had a strong esprit de corps, especially the high, you know, the 51st, and uh, their commanding officers had always told them, you know, this is your unit, don't accept transfer to another unit, blah, blah, blah. And mm. they were kind of, in a sense, following orders by doing that, because when they went to Salerno, they were, they were meant to just go to as reinforcements to other units, a, a uh, hodgepodge of other units, and they yeah. said, no, we're not, we're not taking that. They formed that bond with those other guys, and then they got separated. They want to go yeah. back, and they couldn't go yeah. back. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a history with these regiments that, you know, brothers, yeah. you know, the, the, the old brothers in arms thing, you know, that's yeah. it. Yeah, they wanted to execute them all. Uh, 100, I think it worked out to be about 180 men in total. Of wow. I can't remember the exact numbers, but they wanted to execute them, and... Um, they eventually sentenced them to jail terms, and then after a while, after about a year, they sent them off to Italy. Horrific, um, you know, um, yeah, mm -hmm. right Terrible. front, front line so, units. But so what many, do you think of, in terms of after doing all that research, how the game held up in terms of like, first as, as a game itself, but then also how it dealt, like the historic feel of it. Yeah, look, I, 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 Salerno eclipsed my expectations um, in terms of both uh, how, how it captured the history, but also how fascinating it was as a game to play. Yeah. Um, you seem really excited in your review. On yeah, it. and I think part, large part of it was just because I didn't expect much from it. A one map, really confined space, and it didn't. It doesn't look like much. It looks like such a simple little... Like, what choices can I make here? What am I doing? Yeah. Just, you know, pushing against these mountain passes. But it turns out there's, there's some really fascinating decisions hmm. in that little space. Nathan, they say it. that's the, the better one to start with or one of the best ones to yeah. start with the series because of the smallness. Yeah. But there's yeah. still a lot to do. Yeah, it, it, feels, it feels a lot like... Ardennes 44 is my favourite because of the decisions you're making. Mm. Um, and it feels a lot like that because you're making these little, really important tactical decisions about what path to take and 
crossing the mountains and looking, scrutinizing the terrain and uh, yeah, a great place to start. Look, I, I, um, I want to talk to you about that series, but let's say hi to all of our friends first before we get too far into that. Cause I want to, yeah, we- I posted some comments and, and you know, I've, I've made a few of your live streams and we've talked back and forth and I want to get your feelings about the series. Cause I, I contest that this series is not a good series for people to start with because it's a lot more complex than people think, but we'll get to it. Let's say hi to everyone. Christopher, what's going on? He's uh Belgium's playing uh, some soccer. No, no, no. There's only two places in the world that call it soccer. That's and we've got them both here. <laughs> <laughs> We're outnumbered. Soccer outnumbers football. <laughs> Neil, what's going on? Good to see you. Steven, how you doing? Nordic, hello. He's here for his copy of Knock Paris. No. Yeah. Viper Dave, what's going on? Viper. Jeffrey, what is going on? Mike Bunner Jelly, he was doing our thing last night with us, so thanks for coming by last night. We'll talk about that here in a second. Meandering Mike, hello, Marnie. Uh, hey, Brisbane. Brisbane. What is going on from Brisbane? Well, Americans call it Brisbane for some reason. Brisbane. You mean like Birmingham? Birmingham. Right. Brisbane. Yeah. Kevin, what's going on? Historic Wings, hello. Extra squeaky. Good to see everyone. Edward. <laughs> William Bird. Hello. Koi. Koi was uh, part, here. Of, uh, yeah. part of your thing, Ruff. Yeah. I mean, most of them you said uh, a part of it. Paul. Good afternoon. Paul Richard. Carlin, yeah. How are you doing? Sure. Thomas. Uh, right. Human. Here. There was a question yeah. that I was going to get to here in a second. Um. It's very hot and humid here in the States. Luca, what's going on? Uh, hey. Fire Joe, what's going on there, buddy? Oh, no, great. Sorry. No. Marco, good to see you. Uh, so we have a question. Wise guy. Where in Australia do you get your games from? From the USA. <laughs> it's, crazy over there. it's crazy, isn't it? It's worse than over here. USA, Australia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I've talked in the past often. I get most of my games from a lot of them from GMT, um, but often direct from the publisher, um, or secondhand market. Look, there's not a. It's it's really dying. It's getting worse. I think. But I think I spoke about this last time I was on. How it is so hard, and it's getting worse because one mm. of the big war gaming companies just isn't stopping stocking the biggest historically. Just isn't stocking war games much anymore. And you've got the shipping shipping cost is so much astronomical. Shipping. So I used to do a bulk order once a year. I used to get a box of maybe half a dozen games. I look forward to the GMT sale, which is July this year. No, no, no. no. It's not September. They made a mistake. Oh, okay. Yeah, they posted July, and now they've gone back and said, oh, wait a minute. They're not doing it in in September. (laughs) So I'm going to have to wait until September now to get my my order from GMT. But that's usually... um, Yeah, I think Canada is the other place that has a real bad time of getting stuff, you know, and shipping across, you know, from one adjacent country to another is, again, astronomical. So we don't do too bad over here. But, um, yeah, Mm. I feel for you guys. Is there... I mean, what's the sort of size of the war game community in Australia? Is there Sydney's what? great. The capital cities are great. Sydney has some really wonderful groups. Groups, plural. Um, um, <laughs> not just one. Not just one. Yeah, but I'm I'm out in the country, uh, so there's no. There's, there's got a couple of local friends who I play with, but <clears throat> this is why I mainly play solo because mm, my yeah, friends, luckily, yeah. they're not heavy war gamers. They will play uh, Hannibal Rome versus Carthage, usually <clears throat> Paths of Glory, but nothing deeper than that. You Sorry. mean they won't play Atlantic Wall with you, <laughs> or even one of the uh, even one of the Simonich games? No, no, that's, even they're too long. Uh, we play games that you can play in a single sitting, pretty much. Maybe mm. a long day. Here I stand. We have played here I stand. Or what was the one I saw? Uh, the you were playing La Bataille. I, I was looking at some of your older videos. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is what, and that took three months, four months to play. Oh, that's crazy! Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, we also have uh, Brazil in the house. Brazil, so, wait, wow. We are international. Jim, well, how are you doing, Jim? A lot of places won't <laughs> ship to Brazil. So I've been thinking about Brazilians a lot lately, and uh, they, they, a lot of companies won't ship to Brazil because of postal issues and stuff. Hmm. So that's one place I'll never move to because you can't import Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's terrible to say. 
Yeah, you can add two or three more games yeah. to your order. There you go. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know you've been doing a lot of Seminus games, and, you know, we all love those games and stuff, but, man, I'm telling you what, I played Normandy 44 again thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to be a piece of cake to pick it back up, and it's not. There's a lot, a lot going on in these games. Yeah. And should have done me, it it's summer. like they are not very, I guess, it's for, it's, beginner-friendly, yeah. Yeah, Normandy isn't, and... Look, I like the campaign. I like to play you know, Normandy games, but they're often so grindy and um, well, not... like Atlantic Wall. I watched your yeah. review this past week. <laughs> it was tiring. It was exhausting. I was so relieved when it was over. And it's, it's, it's not an easy rule set, is it? It's not. No, uh, no. no. but um, no, nah, Normandy is a tough one. It's not. It's it's, it's one of the least fun. I think games to play. everybody says Salerno and um, Holland. I don't That's the two oh, favorite yeah. one. I like Ardennes. Ardennes is amazing. It's one of my favorite mm. games of all time. It That's the only so... one I ain't got. It's the yeah, best. I don't have that. Oh, it's the best. It is mm. just but I think so... it that one because of the because of the puzzle of trying to figure out how to get yeah. units around on the roads and everything, yeah, right? Yeah, every unit you move is like, wow, where where can they go? And there's so many decisions available. It's the same reason I love Last Blitzkrieg. Um, this is why I like bulge games, because bulge, ga bulge games, Battle of the Bulge games, they give you these really interesting dis puzzles to solve. You know, the 116th Panthers of the Division has broken through, and now what do they do? They right. can go to the west, they, you know, so many different directions, which one's best, and it's facing those decisions. That's what I love most about gaming is having these really interesting decisions, weighing up the options, um, and then picking one and going with it. Well, you yeah. know there's a bulge game coming out, The Last Gamble from Compass that in July. Yes, yes. Parker's game. Yeah, well, there aren't many of them. We need to, we need another one. There aren't many bulge Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've never heard of it. Bulge. What is this bulge? I think I have doing? enough. I'm joking. Or um, am I? <laughs> what, what did you think so far of like? Because uh, for everyone on the show, look, look what's on. Looks what's on the. You can see, can't it. see it. Move it across. Yeah. Yeah. Move it across. Yeah, a little That's bit over. Okay. Oh my goodness! He uh -huh. see it starts. It starts. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you think of North Africa? Because there's no Zoc bonds. I'll 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 do a review. But to be to be frank, it's one of my least favorites because there's no there's not much decision making. Uh, as I was just saying, I love Ardennes because there's so many decisions. Yeah, North Africa 41 is just a, a, a grind. You're often just on a turn. Some turns, all I'm doing is moving my supplies up, and then I'm done. It's it, because uh, it's expensive. It's one of these early yeah. games as well before he came before he thought. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's, it's and, it, and 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 like any sort of um, North African game, it's just the advance. But you've got to get from A to B yep. and bring your supply. So it's a mad dash. I can mm, yeah. I get what you're saying, but I do love North African games. I'm sorry, just because it's yeah. the bits. Yeah, <laughs> I I like it. I like all Simic games. They're not. Yeah. They're, none of them are bad games, but I'd probably rate it pretty low in the in the. Sort of scale of you need to do game. a video on ranking them all the different yeah ones. i'm gonna i'm gonna this week right? yeah. 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 He's, yeah he's he's thought of that don't you worry he's doing all right. these yeah. uh he knows where where the views are you <laughs> see yeah. he don't knows what he's doing. I, just, yeah, I, I love it um yeah. i'd be interested in your comparison to north africa 41 to the dark summer not not excuse me, the dark sands the dark sands yeah i've got that that's behind me um mm -hmm. but then yeah, again you're the playing you're playing theseus Completely yeah, different game. Yeah. Again, that's a, some people call that a grind because of the length of the turns. I love the system. If to video though, it's not the greatest thing because no. that's why when I did Arkham, I did um, Bull, uh, Boog River. <laughs> I just saw that. Hey, Arnie. Yeah, I did as well. Arnie, <laughs> what's going on, Bunny? Because I'm over here. Oh, uh, I mean that's, that's my hometown. That's my that's my con right there. Origins, boy. Yeah, but I'm saying. With, with every week, I only did three turns, I think, because a turn takes. I mean, yeah. um, Mo, Mo, and um, Kev did um, Boog River, and they they spent three hours. And they they hadn't finished turn one, Dude, so that, yep. that peed them off a bit. Yeah, it's a monster. They're monster yeah. games. I love, they, I love deceptively. The yeah, yeah, deceptively yeah. huge. Because yeah. I watched your videos on Aachen and. I found it, it looked really cool. I like the, the components, the graphic style looked really good. But then when I saw just how long it takes to go through one turn, I thought, you know what? 
I'm going to go to another game. <laughs> but the yeah. good thing is, if you're playing it face to face, you're not sitting there. You, there's reactions. Yeah. So you're not sort of, oh, oh, yeah, it's your turn. I'm going to put the kettle on and see. I'm going to read a book or watch. watch I came film. last year. I can't come every year. I would spoil you guys. <laughs> I would spoil you if I kept coming every year. And I was at Buckeye Game Fest earlier. Remember that? Hey, Ralph, we got a comment for you. Oh, thank huh? you. Another great game. Another great game. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mel Bird. And Ruff, you can combine RAF with Skies. Mm. I know, and not on the channel, because it's just basically just going to, because they're both long games. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably do that in the privacy of my own um, bedroom. Um, so there is actually a subject for this episode, not that we'll probably get a chance to talk about it with all these big mouths going on, but our <laughs> subject this week is I figured since, uh, we have a professor over here, we got a professor over here. We got a ex teacher over here. No tutor. I'm not an ex -teacher, tutor, 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 whatever. Tutor. You're still, you're, I figured we would be talking about Don't things. Don't you call me a teacher. They have too much. We learn because I know this, my wife was a teacher for 30 years. Yeah, I did a little bit of teaching for a couple of years before I moved down here. When you get teaching in your blood, it's all about learning, and you think about that all the time. Am I am I am I full of it, or am I saying the truth? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we don't learn anything. No, no, <laughs> no. no we, just, we just splurged our knowledge out to get paid. That's what That's we right. Do. Exactly. We talk yeah. for a living. Yeah, yeah. So our subject is: What have you learned lately? And lately it could be, we'll just say the last six months or whatever. And this could be anything from you learned, you enjoy these kind of games, you don't enjoy these kind of games, you learned what games you like to have on your channel, you learn how long it takes to run, you know, to play games, you learn about supply, you learn about logistics, you learn about tactics, you learn about whatever. What did you learn in the last six months? I'm sure you learned something if you think about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about later in the show. Think about it, guys. Think about what have you learned in the last six months. And we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, coming up here in a little bit. So there you go. So there is a subject, like I said, we'll probably get to be talking and babbling and everything else. I will mention normally <laughs> the show is over at six o'clock, but my wife is gone so I have nothing going on. So if the show Excellent. runs over, you're, you're it runs over. Around, so you're walking around in your underpants with a can of beer. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, yeah. So if the, if the show runs over, pardon me, I might just be here by myself talking, but who cares? You know, that's good. That's good. Mm. <laughs> I've got one of those coming up, but of course it's late at night. The, 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 the family go, I can't go because of this thing. And also, I don't like camping. I just don't do camping. They're going to a festival, folk festival. Mm. I used to go, but um, they're, they're just they're going off. So that's that's my uh, underpants and can of beer moment, you know. So uh, <laughs> and, and me and me after the show's over, I gotta go read and do a book review on uh, the American economics in the Jacksonian era. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's yeah. for one of my classes. Oh my god! Party and ID just yourself. Yeah, there you party. Go. Hey. Um. The other thing, I uh, we talk about this with a lot of our guests, uh, but Wise Guy, you kind of, you mesh in your war gaming with your Euro games just like I do. Mm, yep. Um, and you like your Euros just as much, and you're proud of it. A lot of people yeah. a lot of people keep it under the table. They don't want to talk about it. I I broadcast. I talk about it all the time. I love it. it it's, like, it's like the love that shall never be mentioned. <laughs> you know, it's that sort of thing. I have no problem. Just going got time. But yeah, it's good. It's good to see, see Euros. I'm not a great. I'm not a great Euro person, Nathan. I'm not. I'm more of a merry trash. Chuck dice and kill yeah. zombies. Yep. That's me. I love them. But you spend just about as much time. Yeah, a good Off camera. A good portion. Yeah. I wouldn't say just as much. Oh, yeah. but you spend a good portion playing Euro games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, probably you get a lot of much kids there. and family and stuff. I play, play, how often play do you think you're able to play? Sorry. I mean, how often do you like? Are you able to play throughout like as, a typical week? As much as friends and kids will let me. Uh, I love, I love, I love. I, I want to play games every night, but the kids and my wife 
Uh, yeah, you're she... so lucky. You're so lucky. Uh, I mean, my wife is terribly with her job. She's, you know, I do what I do. I'm getting on a bit now. I'm sort of winding down. She's like, you know, doing her stuff. She's working all the hours. And and my boy, my daughter certainly wouldn't. You know, my my youngest daughter certainly wouldn't want to play this nonsense, Dad. Mm. Um, and neither does my boy because he's like me. He's a musician, yeah. so that's something. Um, he's he's all into that, like I was at his age, you know. And I just just want to say, come on, let's play something, even if it's not a, not a war game. Let's play something, but no, no time, no time. But yeah, yeah. I, I envy you. I envy you. Yeah, when we can, we played Ark Nova last night. Um, that was fun. My wife and I have been playing the Seventh Citadel, so that's set up on the table. It's like a, a game that you set up and leave. What's that like? Online. Everybody's going on about. There's a new one out, isn't there? Yeah, that's, that's the new one. So Seventh Constant was the original. Ah. And we played that and loved it. And now Seventh Citadel came out this year and it's a sequel and it's brilliant. Mm. Uh, it solves all the problems I had. Uh-oh. It's going to be get. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's going to be lucky. <laughs> it's really good. Um, it's a really good two-player game. You know, we sit side by side and work together, negotiate. What are we going to do here? And So explore. it's a great co-op game, yeah? Great co-op. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Kind of yeah, that's puzzle. the only problem with it. I don't. I never bought the original because it is you're going to have to run several characters, and if you're going to do it solo. You're going to have to run all those characters by yourself. So, yeah, you could. I mean, it's not really about how many characters. I mean, my wife and I could just play one character. Um, you could just play. I think it would work really well solo. I don't think I've done it solo, but it would work really well solo. Just one character exploring this world. The characters. Um, the game wants you to think you're kind of attached to a character, but it's really about what you're doing in that world and, you know, exploring the map exploring and solving and puzzles and adventuring. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, talking about um, games that you've played on your, on your channel, uh, Nathan, um, Hexplore It has got a new one out. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that on Kickstarter at the moment. I've, I've yes, I've gone for it. I'm afraid to mention Kickstarter <laughs> after. No, after I know, I know, know, I know. But I've also <laughs> ordered ordered the first one, the um, thing of the king one, which you can't Valley get. Of the Dead King. Yes. Lock and load, everyone. Lock and load. Oh, lock and load. Lock and load. Sorry. So yes, because I've got uh, the Noxus. What do they call it? The latest one. Not yep. played it yet. Mike Berticelli keeps trying to get me to play it with him online. So when I get the time, I'm going to do that because it looks really good. I've got the expansion and the, everything, yeah. you know. So, uh, but you enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I tried to get my family to play that, so I got my wife and my son to start, and they didn't like it. So we packed it up and I reset it myself and played it. It's a better solo game mm. than it was playing with other people, um, just you know, individually solo exploring a game kind of thing, using your characters. It's all about. I think it's all about character development and, and using their powers and unlocking their. But powers. But explore it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the latest one. They've also got dungeons hidden away where you can go down in and explore the dungeons. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, it it plays great solo. Yeah. Yeah. You've played it, Jesser, and you've played the. Yeah, I played it. Um, it was it was fine. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Um, it's it's one of those. Um, life cycle games where you can just expansion after expansion and add on after add on, and you can make it as big and as you want. So it's it's got potential. You know, I speaking, I almost backed. Uh, I don't remember a couple months ago when um, I think it was Mythwind that was on Kickstarter, and I yeah, I I, I ended up not doing it. I, Good choice. I, it it yeah. looked interesting on the surface, but it, the more I delve into what it was about, yeah. I I got that. You did, and okay. yeah, look, asymmetrical player powers. So you know, four different characters in the box, and they all have diff completely different rules. Right. Um. And so I thought I'll get this for the kids, and they can you know be the farmer yeah. and all this. And they hated it straight away. And my wife and I played it, and it's just so repetitive and. You're doing the same thing over and over and over and over, and there's no end. The game yeah, doesn't end. That was one of the sort of the selling the game. Yeah, but it's so so. There's not not enough interesting stuff happening to justify oh, that. Oh, Ruff decided to leave. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Well, I guess it's good to... that I didn't I didn't back it. Um, he hates Miswin so much. He heard the word and look. It's, right. it's, it's, it's it's a decent, simple game. Not enough to be a perpetual game. I think if something's mm. going to be sold as perpetual, you can play this forever, 
it's got to have enough interesting stuff going on to make you want to play it forever and it didn't so my, I, i've sold it already i sold it it's gone wow yeah. interesting i know there was one um i played a euro a few weeks ago uh small world um mm -hmm. and i enjoyed that it was my first time playing it It was it's kind of a little bit like a like a war game because i mean mm -hmm. you have to fight and everything but um it was it was fun with all the different races and then the different powers they mm -hmm. could have and there's a small world app as well so if you liked it you can get the i think it was an ios oh. so an apple ipad app and play it forever. <laughs> once once the games come out on apps, I often sell my copy because I'm like, oh, if I want to play this, I'll just play it on the app. Agricola yeah. through the ages, small world. They got I still love app. getting the games out. I don't care. I don't care. I like I like having the cards in my hand. I like rolling the dice. Um, I have through the ages, and I I, I buy the app too. But I mean, I still gonna keep it because I just love having and playing it myself and showing it off on the channel too. Yeah. You, you know, that was something I, I wanted to bring up to ask you about, because I, I was really interested in your video, uh, Nathan, recently on um, overcoming war game morale. Um, and I, I know you, you talked a lot about Vassal and you, you did mention, I almost left a comment and then um, like halfway through the video and then you addressed it before I could write the, the comment about, that like I look at a screen all day long uh, in university I, I'm at. And so when I get home, that's sort of the last thing I want to do is keep looking at a screen. And so what sort of, was it just really this, the ease of getting into the game as opposed to pulling it out and setting it up and having to take the time to like, like the dark Valley. Like I love yeah. the dark Valley, but it takes a long time to set up. I think it was North Africa because I wanted to set North Africa up. And I didn't have the it's it's really long map. Mm -hmm. I don't have the space, didn't have the space for it at the time because I've got Seven Citadel set up in the background. And I was like, I really want to play this right now. Um, and so I just thought I'll try Vassal. Try it's the first time I'd ever learn a game on Vassal, and I found it so easy hmm. to get started. I think I did. Did I do North Africa first or Salerno? Maybe I did Salerno first. I think it was Salerno. Yeah, and I just thought this is so easy to do. Um, and I had a lot of fun. And I'm telling you what, you haven't like really experienced, experienced Vassal, but there are some awesome, awesome modules out there. Like yeah. GTS, like it'll auto-calculate all the things right. for you. Yeah, you can yeah. Target yeah. and you can select your unit and then you can select the target. It'll auto-calculate everything for yeah. you. It's awesome. And line it, it, line it, it actually helps you line. learn to play yeah. because you're like, how is that a plus two? And you look and, you, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. I forget it gets a plus one because of this, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, well, you're right. It makes it easier to learn. And anything that, anything that can ease that, that, that yeah, barrier. Yeah, because I've been really interested in, cause I, I really enjoyed your videos on the East Front series. And I, I got Army Group Center, the second edition, and wanted to get into it and just, you know, just I, I look at it and I'm kind of overwhelmed on yep. what do I do? And yep. Vassal seems like it might be a good way to start learning that. I've been thinking about East Front on Vassal lately because I want to do, I want I love it. It's a brilliant series, Vance Von Boris, but it is so big and there are mm -hmm. so many charts and tables and reinforcement sheets that I, when I play East Front, like one title in the series, my couches are full with charts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and and I don't have the space. And I was thinking, well, maybe now that I'm getting to Vassal, I was thinking about this just the other day. Maybe I'll go to East Front and play it by Vassal because it's the yeah. air, the air war as well. I used to hate the air war because mm. I have to, I just have to get up and walk around the other side of the table to find my air units and do all this kind of stuff because mm. that's why I had the air unit sheet and walk back around to where the air combat was. And it would take me you know, five minutes of walking back and forth yeah, to resolve yeah. one air combat. Uh, I was thinking, well, Vassal can do this. Click, click, click. Done. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, I, it's I, interesting I, 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 because I've been saying this for years and everyone poo poos me. And now that you say it, everyone's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Stigler, Stigler's been saying for years, why do people play face to face games anymore? Um, look, I always will. I'll always have my map set out. But I'm thinking, like, I've got Theseus set out here now. Um, but I just think, I think I'll be doing, I'll be doing more of the same, of, of both at the same time. Always have a map. Here's my problem. Like, you're you're a YouTuber, so you've experienced this and the lights and the cameras and everything, and you got cables. 
like yeah. how many times have you had like to reposition your camera your your cord knocks over your counters you got to repos you got to pick them all back up and put them yep. back where they're supposed to go yeah vassal you don't have to worry about any of that stuff uh, it looks good for the viewers yep everything's in focus they can see everything i mean how many times when you zoom out they're not going to be able to tell what what's what going on in this on your table I'm pretty sure the last time I played Stalingrad 42 on my table, I bumped my microphone. Uh, oh. Was it my microphone or my camera, which landed on counters, which sent them flying. Oh, and so, yeah. So that that happens a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I just, I don't know. I feel the, one of the things that stopped me from doing more Vassal is. I, I've, for some reason, I don't feel as connected to the game because I can't physically touch. The, I love the tactileness mm. of war games, of board games in general. And that, and I, I like that when I can step back and see the whole thing mm. in perspective, whereas I have to keep clicking around. Yeah. And it, even have, when, even when you zoom out, the, you st the, the pieces are so small that you can't really tell yeah. what's there. So I had that with Goss. So I tried mm. to play Wacht and Ryan on Vassal. And I found that exactly what you're just saying, that I couldn't connect. It didn't feel tactile. But the Simonich games feel different for some reason. And it's really mm. interesting. I don't know why. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know why. I haven't quite thought about it enough. But, yeah, I've been having the same thing. Oh, I, tried. Thought, I tried last Blitzkrieg on Vassal, kind of fell out of it, lost interest. I tried um, Time for Trumpets on Vassal, found the same thing. I tried Goss on Vassal, fell out of it. But... Lately, these Simonich games work really well on Vassal. I don't know what it is about them. Huh. The, the, the lighter density. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's the type of game I'm playing on Vassal. Yeah. But these games just work better on Vassal. Um, There's only been one game I know that I really connected with on Vassal. I was able to play it all the way through, and that was uh, When Eagles Fight. And I think it's because I could concentrate on the German part of the front and then the Austro-Hungarian part of the front. And I had everything there. Welcome back, Ruff. Don't ask. It's not the cat, was it? No, it's worse than that. It was the wife. The wife? Yeah, moving wires at the back of the internet has oh. knocked me off and we had to wait to, for it to reconnect. I'm not happy chappy. I thought you oh, were so excited right. you went and got your copy of Tide of Iron. Now, what I've done is, is I thought, <laughs> should I go off in a half? No, I was going to, no, no. Yes, I'm back now. Well, you started making me think for a moment, like, what What did we do? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just, I think she just moved the back trying to get something in, not to wire out, and that was it, bang, we're gone. So it's like I've had enough really with all these history people. <laughs> what have I missed? <laughs> I figured you'd be back if, if not. You know, we oh, well, yeah, exactly. Ladies. Yeah, if because because stuff happens, doesn't it? So, no, uh, just yeah. he's going to do is he's going to leave and go live on his own channel right now. <laughs> I might, I might, <laughs> I could do double. That would be awesome. Oh, there you go. Not I get all views from this, and then you know, do my live stream. Wow, that'd be awesome. I if I tried that on this computer, I could uh, boil and uh, you know fry an egg. So, rough. We are talking about something. I think you need to catch up and talk about because. We're talking about how Wise Guy really has fallen in love with Vassal and how it's made his right. playing much easier and much <laughs> better. And I know you you don't feel the same way. Well, let's put it this way. Ask me this a year ago, and uh, it looks like something out of the 90s. Oh, God, no. Give me the counters and all that. Yeah. But since – playing live with you guys, you know, and Tony and that, and playing on Vassal's the only way we can do it. My love for it, and I think that love's too strong a word. My my um acceptance of it, it my okay. acceptance of it is is gone up over over time. So I appreciate that it's a great way to play face to face with people, especially in different countries. Wonderful, wonderful. But um as a as a thing I um, see. I get enjoyment. I know Nathan was saying about setting the game up and all that. I get a bit of enjoyment putting the game out, getting the counters out, putting them down, using the tweezers, putting them out all nice, looking back and going, "Ah, oh, looks good." Uh, and then the cat jumps on the table, and I scream and cry <laughs> in the corner. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, I have more acceptance of Vassal now, and even Tony mentioned it playing. I think he mentioned one of the top highlights of the year when he was on the channel that it was that Ruff uh, actually is starting to uh, like or appreciate Vassal a bit more, which I do. But um, not my pref, you know, I wouldn't use it. I don't think I'd use it to um, do a video with. Let's put it that way. Hmm. So so you'll play, uh, we'll see if you try, like, I was curious to try the Atlantic Chase. Um, That's a great vessel because it goes click, click, click and makes all the noises. But um, Yeah, I've, I haven't messed with it, so I'm curious to try it out at some point. That's a game that I wouldn't want to try in Vassal because it's so tactile. Like the wooden blocks feel so good. When and that's how it. I feel about well, about games is the actual wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the wooden blocks. Yeah, it's quite nice. You also have it's to worry good. about space. And we, I know. we were talking about this yeah. while you were gone. Lighting and cameras. And, and if you're trying to record it for people, you got, you know, um, you got your cables that are dangling everywhere. I mean, it's yeah. it's a nightmare. People don't realize oh, being no, a YouTuber no, that's is not you. easy. That's not, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I get it. I get it. And I'm not dissing anybody that loves it. Yeah, but everybody has an opinion. Oh yes, we feel it. We feel it. You're dissing everyone. <laughs> I know. I do. But you know, your 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 opinion of Vassal is just just as important as mine. And not, none of them are correct. It's just one man, one person's, one woman's uh, view, you know, and they're all valid and they're all well, good. Well, and I found it interesting in your video, Nathan, when you were talking about Vassal and, and morale was that you also, you know, you get to experience something like the campaign for North Africa where you might not yeah. get to do that yeah. in a tactile setting. And she is. That's the, that's the reason. Hey! That's the reason. <laughs> Silly moo, <laughs> fiddling behind wires. Anyway, um, and and the the rules are online, and so you don't have to worry about you know pulling out this long, huge map and and having because it'll be set up for who knows how long if you tried to pull it out. Yeah, you can save. You can save your game. I've got on my desk. They're open right now. I've got it, uh, North it, Africa and Stalingrad right there. Two games, and they're just here on my you know. Yeah. So. That, that look the, com the convenience factor yeah i get it i get it i get it and and you know i don't know i don't know if i think i mentioned this in the green room i don't know i'm not oh, sure if we're playing next week with i'm playing oh. tony uh on vassal playing a bit of musket and pike what are you laughing at i could the, you froze when you were thinking and i thought man he's taking a long time to think <laughs> he's like let me think let me think and then, yeah yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, there's probably still gremlins in the thing. But, yeah, so that's going to be great. And he just says, I'll just save this and click. Yeah, it's done. I get it. I get it. I get it. And I love playing uh, peeps on it. I have to use Vassal. That's great. That's the medium I have to use. That's and, right. You uh, and your yellow tank. Yellow tank, yeah. And yellow submarine. Yeah. Uh, they all get blown up. Pack. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she is before I am. She's a beauty, all right. I am certainly punching way above my weight. Yeah. Oh, there um, we go. Yeah. So I've got nothing against the wrestle. It's just my, my favorite. Yeah, I've I've always had the same view, Ruff. I've never yeah. liked playing Von Vassal. That's changed over the last month or two. And that I've, I've always I've always dis I've you know it's never worked for me. Never worked. I've never been able to play it on Vassal for a long period of time. Whenever I go to Vassal, I it ends up dying. Like my, my game play I end up stop playing. Hmm. Time for trumpets, last Blitzkrieg, um Goss. <coughs> it's just yeah I, the last last month I or think, two. I, I think my um affection for Vassal is is increasing because I'm st also starting to get used to how it works. It used to frustrate me that I've got mm. 10 thumbs when it comes to Vassal and um yeah, I had it was it was frustrating for me. The other thing I would suggest, Ruff, yes. I know we talked about this, but if there's a way for you to get two monitors again, you keep you have, your, you have your map up over here. here and then you have your counters and your and your add-ons and all your other sheets over here on your other yeah, monitor. I know, and I know. You... Oh, is that, yeah. has that been helpful for you, Nathan? To have, do you have two monitors where you can yeah. have like the rules? Yeah, yeah I know, and that's the idea. Of, yeah, I get it. But here, where I remember, at the, I'm I'm at the uh, the other end of the lounge. I'm in our living room, 
and up there up there is the telly and the sofa and all that and table and down here i've i've commandeered the other half of, of the living room so that's it and i've run out of space and there's piles of piles of games here there's piles of games here there's piles of games on my other table so i'd love to get two monitors but i think it's going to have to wait until i get um until i win the pools till i win the lottery well, and, and your yeah. shelves are getting more, more full now because you, now you're buying history books. I know, and it's because of you. Oh, see what this he's is made the other thing I do. Yeah, yeah, see what he's made me buy, Nathan. Yeah, nice. I was it's, a great, a, it's a great book. Cost cost me cost me a fiver. Yeah. Five Free whole postage. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> Flying so, Colors. Have you played that, Nathan? Flying Colors? No, no. I used to play. I used to love close action. I used to play a lot of close action. Mm. It's great. It's a great system. It's not hard. It's uh, you, you're controlling fleets. It's a good book. Good so book. So, what was the chart you were showing? Well, this is the other thing I do when I play yeah. Vassal sometimes is, is put all my charts on one thing. I can like often post that to the wall. And it's just a, all the oh, charts. I see. One, I see somebody else using their company's uh, blooming printing <laughs> thing. Printing yeah, yeah. 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 He does that and all. <laughs> that way, it's hey, all whatever works, work, man. Whatever works. If it works, it works. Yeah, so I think I think there's a, obviously a lot of advantages to Vassal, but um, yeah, you know. there are. I don't knock it. It's I have to use it, you know. And I think, as, I think if you tried and, and used it some more, you'd probably like it. You'd probably start to like well, it. Well, as Tony said, I'm really pleased that Ruff has now started to like Vassal a little bit more, and I have. And don't don't push me. Don't you know? It'll happen naturally, and it has. It's sort of like you know. Well, it just. I don't I mean, just with the how easy it is to move between games that you'll be able to play more games mm. through Vassal. Yeah, but on a 2D blooming 90s yeah. sort of, you know, uh, Windows Windows 98 blooming looking. Th it's just, no, it doesn't, doesn't inspire me. Where if you set a game up and you've got great counters and a map and you look at it and you go, I'm frightened to move anything, which is mm. the uh, the thing you were talking about, Nathan. You know yeah. that looks so beautiful. I don't want to move anything because if mm -hmm. I do, I've got to set it up again. But yeah. that, that's what I love. That's 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 I, me. That's me. Yeah, because yeah, I, I was I remember seeing your video on the Dark Valley, and you had had it all set up and everything. And I was like, oh, I I love this game. I'm i I'd love to hear his thoughts on it. And then there, you didn't do anything. Yeah, well, a game like that in particular, everyone says you've got to do your opening moves perfectly, or it's game over for the Germans. And I was like, what are the perfect moves then? And so then I moved to Vassal, and I had to set it off all over again on Vassal. Mm. And that that's where I stopped. Yeah, um, that that sort I'll of sorry, that's, if that's what the game says, you've got to move these correctly to. Yeah, that's, that's not a game I'd play then. No, I, I could tell you after I've played it probably five or six times, uh, just the Barbarossa scenario. Um, and I also played once the Kursk scenario. It's it's not that. It's it's not first move and then it's kind of over. You can you can still make really good progress and and I had it in one I remember in one game I played, I was <laughs> in um something like I think it was the end of August. In 1941, and I was already at Smolensk, yeah. and I knew that I had to. Unfortunately, I had to take it down because I, ha I had it on my dining room table, and I was having people come over. Uh, but I knew that I would be able to take Moscow by the end of of the year. I I, I knew there wasn't much standing in my way, and um, and I knew I had made bad decisions beforehand. And he dropped again. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I didn't touch anything. I can say I didn't touch anything this time. So, Nathan, it's definitely worth trying it again. Yeah, well, I've got it right behind me. That's it there on the couch. Yeah, I see the, that, yeah. Um, I, I am I, curious, too, because I remember you mentioned in your video that you had it set up roughly ooh. historically where divisions were. Um, at least you tried to, to put them where you, you thought historically different – uh, core and divisions war. I, was, I, I, I haven't found a correct, there is no correct like order of battle for where everything is in that game. I'd love to find something. I don't know how I did that. I don't Sorry. know. I can't. It's been a while. It's been about 18 months, I think. Because so, that was the start of last year. So mm. it's been about 18 months. Yeah. 
Sorry, I, I did a Tony. I did a Tony. <laughs> I closed, closed the tab. Sorry. I think it might have been – I think it was maybe not long after you had done the East Front series, and so maybe yeah. you were yeah. still familiar with – yeah, right. that might have been it, because uh, East East Fronts, yeah, amazing. What um, what is your favorite area of World War Two to game? Is it East Front? Is it West Front? Is it Pacific? Is it Mediterranean? What What do you? What's I, your yeah, go to? I, like, I like the bold, um, because as I said before, it's, it 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 gives you though the the so many bold games gives you these really interesting decision points. Um, so when the Germans first break through, uh, and then the roads open up and the Americans are coming in to block them. So the Americans have got interesting decisions about where to set up these roadblocks, where to, where to try to stop them. And the Germans have to, you know, you've got most games, you've got a German <clears throat> force strength or your attacking strength. So you're weighing up your attack factors with all these little roadblocks and you've got to think, okay, where can I try to punch through? What are my chances of success? Do I take a forest road, which is going to slow me down, but be weak, more weakly defended? Or do I, do I go along the highway where it's well defended? I love, I love that mm. kind of the decisions there that you're making. You're weighing awesome. up different, different roads with different defences, with different sort of you know supply considerations and reinforcements coming through, and what can get you further west. It's not just about breaking through, but you know what's going to happen next if i break through on this forest road can reinforcements get through there or is it just going to be you know ultimately a, a dead end and then then as the germans they're trying to break through to sort of antwerp and that so that would be a great two-player game i'm not sure yeah i think it'll play solo okay if you play you know what the germans have got to do they've they've got a set thing to do haven't they basically what is yeah, um, what is your favorite is it is it ardennes yeah, I mean, I, I, I like East Front games. I like the big attempts to encircle um, Soviet forces. So East Front does that really well. You know, you get these big encirclements around Minsk and all that kind yeah, of stuff going on. I like yeah. that, but <clears throat> they're different decisions. I like, I like how Ardennes. So Stalingrad Forty Two. So, what's your favourite bulge game? Have you got more than one, or is it just Ardennes? Uh, last, no, Last Blitzkrieg. I like Last Blitzkrieg. It's very mm. similar. Feels very similar to Ardennes. That's the BCS yeah. one, isn't it? That's yeah, BCS. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Really, it's a bit more complex, but more decisions to make. Um, yeah. They're both brilliant. I'd be they'd be like top top two easily. And Ardennes forty four is just behind Last Blitz Creek. It's a, it's a easier easy to play. Mm. It's not as sort of um, not as brain burning. You don't. There are points in Last Blitz Creek where you. I'm often double checking rules and things like that. But that really, yeah. What Last did you Blitz think Creek. of? Um, what was it? The the Deadly Woods, the the dark. Yeah, no, it, it's it's there. fun. It's fun, but it doesn't feel historical. It mm. just feels like it's a fun game. game. And there's the one game. that I think that uh, Jester likes, and it's been mentioned in the chat: the Worthington. Bulge game. 1940 yeah, uh, like uh, Battle yeah. of the Bulge, 1944. Nice, nice yeah. easy game. Yeah, that looks more like a game as well. So yeah. Deadly Woods and Bulge, was it Bulge 44? Is that what it's called? They, I haven't played Bulge 44, but I've watched <laughs> a couple of playthroughs and it just looked very much like a fun game rather than mm. sort of... I yeah, tell you, that's what it is. It's not an in-depth... No, you're not going to learn anything. It's just a fun little block. You're going to put blocks out. Yeah, I tell you, I'm I'm very much intimidated by time for trumpets. Yeah, Me too. yeah. Like no way, team. no yeah. way am I going to get that out on the table. Oh, <laughs> mine's it's, still in the shrink. <laughs> it's 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 actually it's not that hard to learn, but it's slow. It's very what do you slow. Think? What do you think about the, the the rules that you can't do certain? You have to do certain things. I understand at certain times to make it yeah. historical. You can't sort of go off script at certain things. <clears throat> well, I, look, well, my, my favorite, favorite game is Paths of Glory, which goes completely off script. Mm. And I think yeah. you know, I play and I play games. Fun, fun game, doesn't it? Yeah, I play games to have fun ultimately, um, or to make to have these interesting decisions. And Paths of Glory does that perfectly for me um so i prefer games that even if they go off script a little bit 
I don't know how historical last split Krieg is. I don't care that much. But well, like historical in the fact you've got the, the, the orders of battle and you starting yeah. places. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's historical enough for me. And then as soon yeah. as you move, it's not. Exactly. <laughs> well, 100%. That's, and that's my view as well. As soon as yeah. you move a unit, you're not historical. Are no. you just taking a different road that did historically? So you're breaking Time for trumpets. There's this thing you can't move here. You can't do yeah. this. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'd, some people love it. I'm not knocking the game. Just saying it's it seems a little bit constricting yeah Look, I, I don't like know system. because i've not played it i don't own it <clears throat> no, i agree i agree with you uh, I, I like the system i don't really care about the you know stringent accuracy you can't you're not allowed to use move units until they're released things like that Look, if it helps create okay. power okay. if it helps yeah. the game that's that's okay so you know i don't mind games that lock units in so in four blau for example the soviets along the front are locked in they can't be released because that's what stalin did historically and it, but it helps create a balance it stops the mm, russians yeah. just from pulling back and winning every right. time yeah, right. and yeah. I, like, I like that when it creates a game balance when it's good for the game when it's being done for historical accuracy whatever read a book oh, look, read know. a book yeah yeah <laughs> don't start me on books <laughs> Oh, you just got a book. Go read it. Yeah, I know. And it's great. great. I started to read it as well. Nice. What's the next one? It's too easy to read in bed because I like to read in bed, like rule books. I know you take well, a new book. So it's like this. I'm like, no, that's not working. <laughs> so, uh, um, do you do um, any ancients? I was going to ask. <laughs> oh, sorry, Nate. Sorry. Nate's our ancient me. expert here, and he loves the ancients. So, did you yeah, go any... through. Not, not lately. I mean, Hannibal Rome versus Carthage. One of my one of my good wargaming buddies is uh, an ancient historian. He's a mm. classicist. He teaches Latin and, and ancient Rome. And he's a he's a he's a hardcore Roman historian, and he likes to play. He likes to play a lot of these ancient games. So um, successes, Hannibal Rome versus Carthage, mm. Caesar Rome versus Gaul. Again, these are the type of games that we can play in a single sitting. We've played um, Pax Romana. Uh, Republic of Rome, stuff like that. I've got SPQR and Julius Don't buy it. Oh, you've got it. Oh, because they're bringing out a new one. Buggers. Oh, really? There's a fifth. Yeah, you've got to an up, upgrade kit if you want to keep so up I used with. to play. Yeah, I used to play SPQR, but um, that's just a bit a bit too heavy. I'll, I'll play that solo. Yeah, I play that solo. I mean, it's. I don't think it's. I'd probably play it because I forget a lot of the rules. I don't think it's – once you get into it, it's okay, isn't it? So, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, AC uh, – a uh, uh, Great Battles of the American Civil War is more crunchy. That I find like a head-scratching, blooming thing, yeah. which I've got a few of. But, yeah, GBOH, yeah, I like it because it's just – it's like Nate does, no, oh, no, I don't like it because it's just lines of lines of troops going, crunch. Yeah, and I, I and I like that as a solo player because well, you know I, what's going to happen. <laughs> I, you played, might, I, played, you I might get some horsey things going around the outside, you know. About a decade ago, I played, um, is it Kane or Hannibal? Hannibal's, yeah. you know, envelop, double envelopment, the famous double yeah. envelopment. And yeah. I was the Roman, and I played this on Vassal with a friend who lived many five hours away. And as the Romans, I turtled. So my front lines just went like this. And his flanks came around, and he hit and he my went, flank, and he couldn't break through. He went, "You're not supposed and, to do that." <laughs> and he, uh, he never played with me again. No, he, <laughs> like, no. yeah. he was really angry. He's like, "You can't, you can't." The Romans didn't do that. I was like, "It doesn't oh, matter. I did no, that. I, I, mean, I did it." <laughs> and we never well, that's played. That's my love, yeah. Because really you expect, if you know the game, if you know the battle historically, yeah. ah, I know what I'm going to do. I'm coming mm -hmm. around the. App. What's he doing? <laughs> no, he no. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I love, you know. Because yeah. you don't got to rethink your tactics; you got to rethink, yeah. you know. And that's what I love about it. It was the kind of what if the Romans didn't just go charging down the middle, but they just kind of defended and pulled into a, a semi horseshoe. Next, next time I play that with somebody, I'm going to try that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know you didn't. Um, I think I think it was one of your reviews, Pax Romana, that you didn't particularly care for that. Oh, the combat. I loved it. I loved Pac. Oh, you brilliant. loved it? Okay. Uh, we didn't like more. Well, my friend hated. I won. So, <laughs> he, uh, so I, I, yeah, I liked it. But he was the Romans. And um, Sounds like you you got a weird group of friends over there, you wise guy. Everyone's pissed off at you for yeah, winning. Yeah, you don't really play the game. You don't, do. you don't go buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> this game really punishes the Roman player because they've got mm. their legions and they're expensive. 
and you know they they come charging into these battles against these these Gallic tribes, and they might outnumber them three to one, but then they'll lose thirty percent of their troops. So they've lost you know four legions in this winning battle, and he was really frustrated that mm. he's losing so many. And uh, yeah, it's it's really punishing to. Okay. It's a pun. It's an unforgiving combat system. Mm. I, I have the second edition, but I haven't yet played it. Um, I do, I will say I do really love Imperium Romanum uh, from Al Nofi's Imperium Romanum. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've uh, a lot of games you're mentioning. Game. Sorry, sorry. As a, as a newbie, are these games you're mentioning more sort of Euro ishness to them, or are they no. pure war games? They're war kind games. of. I mean. They're, they're kind of, uh, they're, I'd say they're war games. They're not hexing, well. No, no, that, that, that's fine. I mean, Pax, Rom Pax Roman is a Richard Berg game. Yeah, point to point. Oh, right, okay. So um, it's kind of, it, he, he did the same, he did Pax Romana and then he went and did Genesis, which is more or less the same system, but in the Bronze Age, um, the, the, the collapse of the Bronze Age. And, um, but then he went and did the, Rise of the Roman Republic, Carthage, and then Thunderbolts coming out. Which right, you know, so that's that sort of system, is it? It's so that's the hex counter is Thunderbolt, Rise of the Roman Republic, Genesis, and Pax Romana is the point to point. Right, um, but there's similar things across them that I've seen. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to uh, Thunderbolt. So, uh... well. Um... It's already past five, so we got to get busy on our Today in History. Oh, God, I've been drinking. What? Hey. Oh, my gosh. How many planes does he have to show us? Today? Oh, I tell you what, you do. I love my planes. Me and Tom, Thomas, hopefully, anyway. All right, no, let's do it. Let's right get it right. out of the way. Okay. Uh, so, 22nd of June, 1807, in the Chesapeake, sorry, uh, Chesapeake, is it? How do you pronounce that? Chesapeake, yes. It is Chesapeake, yeah. In the, I know it is. In the Chesapeake Leopard Affair, don't know if you heard about that. The British warship HMS Leopard attacks and boards the American frigate USS Chesapeake. This affair was a naval engagement off the coast of Norfolk, Virginia, today in 1807, between the British fourth rate HMS Leopard and the American frigate USS Chesapeake. The crew of Leopard pursued, attacked, and boarded the American frigate, looking for deserters from the Royal Navy. Oh. Chesapeake was caught unprepared, and after a short battle involving broadsides received from Leopard, the commander of Chesapeake, James Barron, surrendered his vessel to the British. Uh, Chesapeake had, had fired only one shot. Four crew members were removed from the American vessel and were tried for desertion, one of, whom, one of whom was subsequently hanged. Chesapeake was allowed to return home, where James Barron was court-martialed and relieved of command. We weren't at war at that time. We just knew that there was some, uh, during the, uh, the, the Napoleonic Wars, they were sort of deserting a little bit because they were stationed in that part of the world to, to, to blockade uh, Napoleon's mm. fleet from, from supplies and things, and they just deserted and went across to uh, you guys. Well, American, and, uh, Americans were impressed, weren't they? Weren't, weren't Americans um, sort of impressed into service in the Royal Navy? Wasn't it a factor in the? No, I think well, they, they they came that they were British. They were English right, sailors so they were British, so. to um, oh, right. yeah, to yeah. the Americans because they weren't happy. I think there were some <laughs> reasons for it, um, but anyway, they caught up with them. So is it weird that it wasn't a war thing? It was just like you've got our guys who deserve to give them back <laughs> well, to the snow. Yeah, yeah, weird. Uh, so that's the uh, 1807. 1812, France declares war on Russia, starting Napoleon's invasion. This is to do with the uh, continental uh, blockade thing. Uh, they wanted to get Russian, uh, Russia on board for that <clears throat> by uh, annihilating them. But, oh, dear, how sad. <laughs> no, that didn't quite work out. Anyway, 1813, War of 1812. After learning the American plans for a surprise attack on Beaver Dams in Ontario, Laura Secord sets out on a 30-kilometer, 20-mile journey on foot to warn Lieutenant James Fitzgibbon. Her contribution to the war was little known during her lifetime, but since her death, she has been frequently honored in Canada. 
though Laura Secord has no relation to it, most Canadians, and you've got to tell me if this is true, if there's any uh, Canadians in the chat, most Canadians associate her with the Laura Secord Chocolates Company, named after her on the centennial of her walk, which I thought was quite, quite good. Whizzing to 1893, the Royal Navy battleship HMS Camperdown accidentally rammed the British Mediterranean fleet flagship, flagship ship. Jeez, have another drink, rough. Uh, HMS Victoria near Tripoli uh, in the Lebanon. HMS Vic Victoria sank, taking 358 crew with her, Ooh. including the commander of the British Mediterranean fleet, Vice Admiral Sir George Tyron. A lot of naval stuff. It just happens to be that way. 1940, though, World War II, France is forced to sign the second uh, Compiègne armistice with Germany in the same railroad car in which the Germans signed the armistice in 1918. That was his way of getting back at them for the humiliation. 1940 as well, General Albert Kesselring directs Hauptmann Wolfgang Falk to establish the Luftwaffe's first true night fighter unit, the NAC Jar des Schwader I. It is the birth of the German specialized night fighter force of World War II. 1941, Nazi Germany, sorry, Yahtzee, you can't say the word, Yahtzee Germany. You guys demonetize now. I know, I know, no. Yahtzee Germany invades the Soviet Union in Operation Barbarossa. And 1941, within the first hour of the war, Soviet pilot, a lieutenant, Lieutenant Ivanov, of the 46th Fighter Air Regiment rams a Heinkel HE-111, the first of 10 Soviet aerial rammings that day and more than 200 during the war. Ivanov is, of course, killed in the ramming. So it's not just a Japanese thing. Wow, I've never heard of this before. I, yeah, crazy, isn't it? This huh. was, you know, they were for it you know they were fired up and it's all oh, faulty triggers what's going on what's right no they don't <laughs> deliberately really rammed deliberately yeah, rammed right. hmm. a, a kamikaze before kamikaze hmm. 1942 world war Two again er, uh erwin rommel is promoted to field marshal after the axis capture of tobruk he certainly did he get didn't get it with my playthrough of uh, Rommel when he couldn't get out of Belgium. Anyway, <laughs> 1944, World War II, of course, opening day of the Soviet Union's Operation Bagration against the Army Group Center. It was a military campaign fought between today and the 19th of August 44 in Soviet Belarus in the Eastern Front of World War II just after two weeks after the start of Operation Overlord in the West, causing Nazi Germany to have to fight on two major fronts at the same time. The Soviet Union destroyed 28 of 34 divisions of Army Group Center and completely shattered the German front line. It was the biggest defeat in German military history, with around 450,000 German casualties, while 300,000 other German soldiers were cut off in the Corlin pocket. 1945, World War II. The Battle of Okinawa comes to an end with an American flag-raising ceremony. And then in 1947, let me go. I've got a picture. I've got a picture. Hold on. Oh, here we go. Get your magnifying glasses. Right. Pass the pixels. <laughs> so I have to put up with Nathan. This is terrible. Hold on. Let's get it out. 1947, the Martin XB-48 makes first flight. The Martin XB-48 was an American medium jet bomber developed in the mid-1940s. It competed with the Boeing B-47 Stratojet, which proved to be a superior design and was largely considered as a backup plan in case the B-47 ran into development problems. Obviously, it didn't. And... Um, they only made two of these things. So what do you think? Let's have a look. Uh, there we go. Maybe. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> that didn't didn't quite make it. Hmm. 
Where are we? So, yep. Yeah. What we got now? We've got, oh, now we've got 1951. This entered service, the Super, Super Marine Attacker. Uh, joined uh, 800 Naval Air Squadron, the Fleet Air Arms First Jet. Now, let me get that up. It's not the best-looking thing, I must admit. I'm not – it's just uh, – hasn't got the sort of um, sexiness, if you like, of the uh, American um, planes of that time. Let me see if I can get that up. Present – mm-mm. I never thought I'd hear a Brit actually say something nice about the United States. Well, you had all these sexy silver things, didn't you? And it was um, – let me just get it up. Well, I mustn't say that. Let me get, put, get the picture up on the screen again. Um, I can't say I've ever heard a phrase describing American planes like that before. What, sexy? Sexy silver things. Oh, they are. They are. You look at this in a minute. Hold on. Let's see if I can get this up. Uh, I must stop saying that because that sounds very rude. <laughs> I know what I mean. Why haven't I got? Uh, oh, what's going you on? Here? Your, yeah, you gotta see it. Yeah. Watch it. He'll accidentally drop. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I can't share that. It's usually after because he clicks the close. Right. I'm going to cut myself off in a minute. Just, just <laughs> watch. Let's see. Uh, share screen window. Entire screen. Chrome tab. You see why this? Oh, there is. I've got it. I've got it. Uh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. There we go. Hey, there we go. Not the greatest looking thing. Looks like a miniature XB48. Yeah, it's it's just yeah, compared to um, you know, the other, you know, the 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 50s jets of America, they certainly um knew what the they were doing. Says there. It exactly right. British aircraft design is always a big hit and miss. Perfection versus weird things with bits and bits. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um so that's uh, that's that. Let's get rid of that. Right. Where were we? Do you like me aircraft? It was retired in 1954, and the Royal Naval Voluntary Reserve, uh, 1957, uh, re yeah, retired from the uh, uh, Pakistani Army, not until 1964, or Air Force, sorry, Pakistani Air Force, kept it until 1964. One more. Now, this is what I mean. This is 1954. This is three years later. And this is what I say about sexy. Sexy American planes, four years later. Maybe. There we go. First flight oh, wow. of the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk. Wow. American carrier-capable ground attack aircraft. See? Not as pointy and sort of, you know, that sort of sci-fi thing that came a year or two later. But my goodness, compared to the uh, poor old Supermarine attacker. Um, so oh, this is that? There we go. That's the man. Yeah, the game. Yeah. There first you fight today. Uh, it was actually introduced uh, 1st of October, 56. Uh, the United States Marine Corps kept it until 1998. The U.S. Navy, 2003. Huh. The Israeli Air Force, 2015. And the Royal Navy, uh, the Royal New Zealand Air Force, 2001. So still an aircraft that's um, that was huh. used until quite recently. But, yeah, compared, you know, still a little bit clunky compared to uh, the um, attacker. You know, there we go. Right. Uh, and then this is quite nice. 1975, uh, Svetlana Savetskaya sets a new women's airspeed record, a woman's airspeed record of 1,667 miles per hour in the Mykoyan YE-133, a modified MiG-25 PU two-seater trainer. So go girl is all I can say. <laughs> Fantastic. Nice. Yes. And uh, 1990, we finished with this. 1990, Cold War, Checkpoint C, Checkpoint Charlie is dismantled in Berlin. Hmm. There we are. Wow. What happened? Crazy. Well, well, well. And you wonder why it takes 20 minutes there, wise guy. Wow. 
You got to learn all about the footage. Some good stuff. And about the airplanes. Yeah, yeah. If you notice, they're creeping in. You'll get some. You'll get some sale stuff coming in as well um, as time goes on. (laughs) Nate, do you have something to share today? Yes, I do. Actually, I have. I have books for both. You rough and jester. No, no, seriously, if you think it's going on too much, I love it because this is what I've been learning over the last. This is part of what we're talking about today. If it's going on too long, I'll make it shorter. I don't mind. No, it was was wonderful. Okay, no, no, just don't. don't, Okay, I'm just teasing you, man. With the wine and all, it was it was great. Yeah, I'm sorry that some of the worms (laughs) come out a bit incorrectly. So, uh, but it is you know it's twenty past ten p.m. here. It is. Well, I'll tell you, I was, I, you yeah. know, I was, in, I, I was inspired by uh, Nathan's recent videos on North Africa 41, uh, and I haven't played it yet. I've only played the Dark Sands and really liked it. Um, but it would be interesting after what um, Nathan said about it, how you feel about playing Dark Sands and this one as well. So, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but Jester, I. This is a great book that I enjoyed, The Luftwaffe in the North African Campaign. Nice. Okay. And I love that there is like numerous pictures throughout. He he likes pictures. He likes pictures. I like pictures. Yeah. Um, Like different, you know, formations. And it it is a great book. I picked this up at the um, uh, United States Air Force Museum. Um, in Dayton, Ohio, when I was there, and uh, great, great, great book. Um, so, Jester, you should definitely look to find this one, it's very good. But I also, another book that when I was in uh, doing my master's degree, I did some grad uh, work uh, research on uh, North Africa, has always been that's North Africa and the Mediterranean is my favorite theater of World War II to study. And I was really interested in studying um, particularly the first battle of El Alamein in July 42. And I went and looked through some like war cabinet files um, that are now available online. But it's funny when you when you pull up the digital version of it, you still see top secret. You know, nobody's supposed to look at it. For your eyes only. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And to to use the microfish machine. Right, right. Get, you just download it and read it. And, it's all and, it's all modern now. That's it's not right. like those nineteen sixty spy films <laughs> where they're going through, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I I was really fascinated doing that research. I I had I had argued, and I I wrote a long paper on it, and it's published online. Um, where I had argued that the first battle was more significant and decisive than the second battle. In what uh, way? And what's that? In what way? Well, in in that the a lot of people focus on the second battle as as sort of the beginning of the end of yeah. of the uh, the Africa Corps. Well, first one, we got sort of our asses kicked, didn't we? A little and, bit. In so. the first one, like they barely held on. Um, but if you look at sort of deeper into like the, the Africa Corps was at the ex, the very limits of their logistical uh, capabilities. They were supposed to get something like. 80,000 ton or 60, 70,000 tons worth of supplies to the, to the front. Um, and after they took Tobruk instead, only like 6,000 tons had, had arrived. There was like only about 30 tanks that were in working order by July. I mean, they were, they could have been completely obliterated uh, uh, if, if the British were able to, to turn themselves around. I mean, immediately in, in July 42, um, the United States sent over something like 50 to 60 uh, Sherman tanks. Um, and by, you know, by the they were getting something like 500,000 um, tons of supply in. And the Germans just could not access, couldn't couldn't uh, compensate for that. I think and, also if the Germ- if the, the Brits realized how stretched the Germans were, they may have acted slightly differently. They were being, because yeah. as you know, Montgomery is a cautious man. Mm. Right. Well, I, I was convinced that the first battle was more significant in that when I was reading through the cabinet papers that in late June of 42, the cabinet had, had already considered 
blowing up factories and, and bridges and, and all kinds of infrastructure in Egypt, um, anticipating that it was going to get run over. They had already mm -hmm. anticipated forcibly removing the king of Egypt from Cairo. Mm -hmm. And even in uh, right before the first battle of El Alamein, the British fleet left <clears throat> Alexandria. And uh, there was also uh, student demonstrations in favor of the Germans in Cairo. And they, right had the amp, they got the amp with us, you see, after, right. you know, whatever. But the other thing is, as Corey so, said, if, if, if uh, Mr. Mr. Titler hadn't uh, decided to invade Russia, because he pulled a lot of stuff out from, from uh, Africa to, mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As he said, we, it might have been a different story. Yeah. yeah. And like I, I looked at so like all right before all of that there there you can sense a level of panic setting in into the cabinet um, as they're discussing this. But after the battle, it's never discussed in terms of we might have we might lose. We might need to pull out. It's never mentioned whatsoever. There's it's no the British case. way. We don't know. It's not cricket. <laughs> You know, yeah, and so it was. I, I found it. I, I found it fascinating. So anyway, this is, and I'm, it, ah, this is a great book. Um, it's it's small. Look at that. Look, it doesn't matter how small it is. You get me buying books again, Nate, and I don't. And I, for that, for that, you know, you come off my Christmas card list. I'll One thing you. I really liked about this too is detailed order of battle for wow. each of the divisions that are within the Africa Corps. And depending on the date as well, uh, plus, yep. Like oh, I just love pictures yeah. like these. Wow, really through. I just love the silhouettes of. of yeah, need more of those. Yeah, and um, I, I mean, you know, I mean, it's a shame I put all my books away because I could do, I could do a counterpoint to you. I say, my favorite, you know, my books. I mean, um, as I say, I've got one shelf left down there, and uh, yeah. Well, rough. You could get the you got you got Nelson's Navy for flying colors, so you need oh, the got, North Africa. I've also got uh, Nelson at the Nile coming in because of you, because of this game. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and well, and no, also Nelson's Nelson at Trafalgar. Well, I know I mentioned it on the show once before, uh, but since today is kind of, I mean, yesterday was the anniversary of Barbarossa. Uh, but this is a if ever, this is a great book. Um, it's like a, a one single volume on Barbarossa. Do you know what? Me, me being in a World book. War Two, I love me World War Two, and I'm getting into other things, which we'll talk about. You know, uh, in in the the, the the subject today's thingy. Um, if we get to it, yes. Oh well, if we don't, we don't. Who oh, cares? So um, we got we got Nathan here. I can't quite look like, like Napoleonics, and I'll tell you how I'm getting into that when we do it but eastern front can't why i can't it just seems it's too big it's too massive and you know i need a little bit of oh convincing no well for me i know there are people you know and you uh, nathan likes it you you like it as well nate you know and i know you like your eastern front as well um for me though it i don't know which is why I do my things sort of different. And I know you're going to poo poo it, but this uh, look. <laughs> mm. I've got me cards. Oh, Jess, I was going to I was just going to say, did you get your cards? Yeah, they were great. They were great. So nice. uh, I've got me cards. That's all ready to go. So, yeah. But um, I need convincing. Maybe I've got to play a few more. So, uh, I think bite-sized chunks, like because it, as you say, it's so it's big. Huge. Four years, so many different operations. It's so like, huge they split it into three blooming army groups. You know, it's like. Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah. Well, you could play the Russian campaign. That... I've got that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually was learning that myself. It's so, not too uh, difficult. Not too. Watching difficult. Wise Guy, I'm like, I can do this on Vassal. Yeah. Let's do it. No. So. I've got the mounted map for it. Am I going to do this on Vassal? No, matey. Yeah, well, you got a big table. I don't have a big table. Well, or if you get the big. if you got the compass version, then it's only one mounted map. As no, I've got to. the the revamped, if you like, re they, they re did the, the rules. Yeah. Um. So before I start my segment, wise guy, you might oh, like this. Yeah. Um. Have you ever heard of a game called Tide of Iron? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. My son loves it. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, these two Yahoos are the only people in America that have never heard of it. So I'm not allowed to do. I'm not allowed to do my guessing game anymore. So now what I do is I do my. We're doing the top 500 war game countdown. So Which I find week, far more interesting. Uh, that segment took, uh, it was a lot of prayer and perspiration to get through yeah, it. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> and this is the only time he went off in a hissy fit and went off and go, oh, yeah, and he left the, left the stream. <laughs> like, goodbye. So, so yes. now what I have to do is I have to pacify these two and try to get them something. So I'm going through the top 500 games. Every week I do 10 games. So this week we start with 400 and 440 up to 431. Because it's dynamic, it's quite and interesting. And we can talk about each of these games for a second. And and down. It's a bit like the old top 20 in the old days, yeah? Listen. So what I'm going to do right is I'm actually going to stop sharing <laughs> that, and I'm going to share. I'll just see the comment, Tide of Iron Sales saw a spike that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so number 440. And someday we're going to get all the way up to number one, but 440 is Rise of the Luftwaffe from 1993. Two-day players, weight of 2.14. Uh, have you ever played this one, Wise Guy? No, but I have. I used to own. I may have owned that previously. No, really? I've never, played, never played the Down in Flame series. No. Is it based on the Down in Flame thingy? Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically Down in Flames, but with the Luftwaffe. Yeah. Yeah, card uh. card. Uh, no, never. I own. May, I may have owned it, but never got to play it. And so because it, you can't you, solo it with your weird mates, yeah. Nathan. Yeah, <laughs> you need two to eight yeah. players, and you yeah. know the way you piss off your friends. Um, you're, you're not, no you're you're not playing by the book historically. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number uh, four hundred thirty-nine is going to be Axes and Allies, nineteen forty-two. <laughs> I've never yeah. heard of that game. Don't know what yeah, that Ian. is. <laughs> Axis and Allies in 1942. Two to What's five this player. all about, then? This is a new one on me. Yeah. I'm yeah. joking. It's all right. It's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, I, I've i played this never, version. Never played any of them. Never played any really? of them. Really? Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. Wow. The global ones, global Europe and Pacific together are really fun to play. Uh, Axis and Allies was my first war game, technically. Is it a war game? <clears throat> yeah, it's a war yeah. game. It was my yeah, first was war game. Same. Yeah. I, I played Risk and then went off to do D and D and fantasy stuff for a while, mm. you know. So yeah, never got round to um, Axis and Allies. All right, number four thirty-eight is Next War. Mm. I India Pakistan. Mitch, get this bloody reprinted for goodness' sake. Right. There's no no naval stuff in it, so it's a great one to learn to play this system. Yep. Made by Gene Bing Billingsley and Mitch Land. GMT Games 2015. We need a reprint. We do. Have you uh, ever played in the Next War series, Wise Guy? No, no. Hypothetical modern conflict. You can't go that. wrong. There's no wrong move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one could complain about it, me doing. No, you like... have to do this move first. Yeah. <laughs> it is good. I mean, even the basic game, okay, it's nice and easy and it's it's good. Look at those counters! Ooh, they are caught. There are those sort of counters, counter. huh? yeah. yeah, I have to, you know, as you know, I'm using this more and more now. Uh oh, oh no boy! They See, are half inch. That's why you can just zoom right in. <laughs> sure. Uh, four uh, four thirty seven is going to be Blue Water Navy. Ooh. Oh, I am really interested in that one. Ne never got it though. It's an. It, I don't think it plays that well solo, which is why uh, I never it's got CDG, it. isn't it? Yeah, I've got to. Yeah, I've got to take that into consideration. I do love a good naval game. When I, yes, me. Oh gosh, yes. You're talking to the oh, converter card, here. It's a card driven, card driven naval game. Yeah. yeah, I love card driven games. I didn't know it was card. I've, so I, I, this was part of my bulk order. Um, I think last year or the year before that I ordered for a friend, he ordered this. <coughs> so it came over in a big box from America. Have you played it yet? No, I, I haven't played Him? it. No. But, uh, I mean, I'm starting of... to like card-driven games because there are now solo things mm. that GMT are, are bringing out. So, and I know there's a sequel with this is yeah. obviously in the in the Atlantic. There's a Pacific version that's coming out at some point. 
All right, uh, number 436. We saw this last week, boys. It keeps mm -hmm. coming down the list with coming us. Down. Yeah. Coming it down. Coming down. It was 447 last week. It's uh, still it's one of the weirdest covers I've ever seen. I don't know what it has to do with the uh, War of the Roses. I think this is one of the series. first covers that they did be after Roger uh, McGowan left. Right. And they thought, who are we going to? Oh, uh, yeah, you, you, coffee boy, right? Get draw something. Yeah. The, the nice. whole series needs a new cover. They, they need a nice border to sell yeah. the series. Yeah. Because uh, Nevsky, I was turned off Nevsky because Nevsky's got the weirdest cover. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. Great it's staring at you. <laughs> oh, I just thought, I, yeah, they need a, no, they again, need a series. Another, another series I didn't dip my toe into because it's a rabbit hole. They're now, just bringing them out. Like coin, they're bringing them out. I will yeah. say this. The cover for the new Seljuk game does look really good. Um, so that they seem to might have fixed all of those issues with, with, uh, with that. Um, like this, but, is the, this is the, <coughs> yeah, Koi says the game is night. fun. The, the covers pants, as he says, but the game is fun. But then if you saw that in a shop, yeah, it's, you're not going to know nice. it's fun. There are, there are, there are, you know, there are knights and, and armies mm -hmm. and it's a tent with a little, little couple of dudes on. Yeah. It's a squad. It does have a great map, though. The map is really good. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I definitely, I, I want to play this series, and and you yeah, know, not, no, no. There's one for you, Nate. Oh. Flames of War, <laughs> World War II miniatures game. You're gonna, you got the Flames of War stuff going on. I don't. I don't have any any World War II miniatures. No, I thought you were you were gonna do the Flames of War thing. No, I actually no, did. The other one. Well, you reminded it? me. It's the the Australian one from from Nathan's part of the world. Is that the one you mean? The big monster yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, the Flames of War. I thought he was going to start getting into that. He was trying to decide. No, I actually ended up. Um, I got my first miniatures actually this week. Oh. Um, and I I I couldn't resist. I I went with the Romans. <laughs> oh, go <laughs> figure. Yeah. Of course he did. For what system? Um, I think uh, it's it's kind of generic. You can just right. adapt yeah, any system. system I think I might try the. I think it's called Hail Caesar, um, system. Kaiser, um, it looked Kaiser. interesting to me, but yeah, I, I this is this is a bad. I was almost saying that. All right, number four thirty-four is General Orders World War Two from twenty thirteen. Came out last year. Speaking of this. Oh, it's a David Thompson design. Yeah. With uh, Trevor Benjamin, David yeah. Thompson. Oh, it's Osprey. No, it's that's a game company I've not had any buying got, relationship. Um, with. Little meeples. It's got a very tiny board. Yeah. Mm. But maybe it's a great introductory into, you know, into war gaming. I don't know. Yeah, I don't Any know about this either. Yeah. Tony, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Oh, right. Right. so yeah, I don't know anything about it, but no, uh, I don't know. Yeah, came out last year. Number four thirty-three is Warhammer Forty K Heroes of Black Reach. Never hmm. got into that. I was playing Warhammer Fantasy. Never got into oh, and Hero oh. Quest and all that malarkey. Yeah. So this is the Heroes of Normandy system, yeah. which they ported to the 40k universe. That's that. Yeah, the same gameplay as Heroes of Normandy, but with Warhammer 40k. Yeah. Hold on, can, I just, can I just ask while, while he's in the chat if he's still there, Tony? Are you available next Saturday to come on here? Right, off we go. He'll he'll answer in the chat because he's a good boy. Yeah. So um, I've been looking at that Normandy uh, series. Have you tried that one, Nate? Nate? No, I haven't. It's yeah, another which, good introduction to which one is he talking to? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. We're outnumbered by Nate's there, Roth. <laughs> Nate you number say, two. Yeah, yeah, you have to say. I think just call him Wise Guy. That's yeah, that's why I've been calling him Wise Guy because I'm yeah. like, ah, uh, yeah. Well, he's got uh, the PhD. He could be Doctor Nate, and I'll just be Nate. <laughs> no, don't. Well, you'll get you're getting yours. I'll get it next uh, year. Oh, oh, look at this! Come on now. Great looking components. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I don't know. I could definitely see myself playing this one. You like um, the other um, game uh, has those tiles has that you've been tile. playing a lot of and you like. David Thompson game. Oh, oh Undaunted? Uh, Undaunted. Undaunted. Yeah. Yeah, Undaunted. Yeah, very yeah. good game. Yes. So you might like that. Yep. Uh, 432, mm. Enemy of the Games. Hmm. ICS. This is a Dean Essig. Now, mm. am I correct? And okay, Tom. Thanks. Anyway, they've re um, redone this, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Case Blue. This is Case mm -hmm. Blue. This is a, uh, yeah. a lot, but a lot of people are talking about this lately uh, because Case Blue is so expensive. So I saw some people saying Enemy of the Gates is more is easier to get hold of, and it covers covers the Caucasus and. Um, I think four blau. Uh, so people are saying, you know, you could go back to this if you wanted to cover that campaign. Yeah, but it's big. It'll still be big. Yeah, yeah. this is it. This is maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. this is maybe what sort of like and you can get it for sixty five freaking dollars. Yeah. So compared to the thousands, you'll probably play for Case right. Blue. Yeah, so crazy. That's a more that's that's a bargain. Um, these older versions of OCS, basically, they're cheap. Yeah, they are. They're the original. Original gamers ones, aren't they? Mm, yeah. And our final one for this week. Hey. Crime by uh, Vuka. Yeah. yeah, I love I love them. I love I love the system. It's a it's okay once you get going. It's a grind to get through the turns just how many of you can just reach up. over and grab it and have the game right here in front of you. Yeah. That that is a professional YouTuber right there. You All right. Have, have it at a moment. Have I've done a, I've, and I know Nate's done a, a little play. I've done a playthrough as well. That was my first, when I first started doing YouTube, that was my first Hex Encounter game I did. This one? Mm. Yeah. That's a heavy Hex Encounter to, to, to start with. It's, uh... it, was, it was great fun. I probably made a few mistakes, but it was great fun. I liked it. Uh, yeah, Tony, totally awesome. are you good to play Friday, Ralph? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I did mention that, yeah. It means I've got to read the rules again. Good musket, grief. Yeah, Musket and Pike over yeah, on uh, Tony's Pike, channel. Yeah. Make sure we talk about that. That's on, that's on my list as well. Yes. Get your yellow muskets out. Yeah, we're going to be wearing bright orange and uh, purple uniforms. Oh, so you're going to so be the parliamentarians. Blend, so we can blend into the, uh, you know, into the... Uh, Surrounding parliamentarians. Yeah, if you're going to be orange, then you're going to be parliament. You're going to, or you're going to play the. I don't know. I don't know what we're playing. I don't know who we're going to do. We're just going to turn up on the night and just say, "What do you want to do?" I don't know. That's what it. That's what I love about it. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Well, oh. well just to so, this um, interesting yeah. topic that we have for today. Yeah, it is, Michael. It's topic brilliant. Game, today it? is um. Oh, it's time to wrap up. No, not quite. But soon, <laughs> time to wrap up. Our topic today is what have you learned recently since we've got professors and professors and more professors and doctors and yeah, I, know, crazy. I, mean, I don't even know what you guys are. I'm just a little schmo, man. I'm a nobody. So, Why rough um, drinks? It feels intimidating. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll just go around. That was a nice circle, Rioja, that was. Starting yeah. with Nate number one, the non-doctor. And uh, you can... Talk about what you learned. So I, I'll, I'll go back to something that I, I know I've mentioned on this show many times. Oh, look at that. Now straight from the bottle. <laughs> oh, it's water. Well, because I normally get the big ones. I like the fizzy water. And the difference between the us and you is that your bottle water is just tap water that's been purified. Ours has to be spring water. Okay. Great. It's proper spring yeah. water. It's not not tap water. Interesting. So well, anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, a game a, a game that I mentioned several times in the show that I I really enjoy and we'll be doing a review on at some point here in the near future is Death in the Trenches, and played that for a good month solid. Um, really, just really, really enjoyed that game. Um, it was at at the same time, while I was playing that game, I've been reading World War One books and was <coughs> actually I was trying to do was uh, read the books on the year and the campaigns in which that I was playing at that moment. So I could play a little bit, read a little bit more and see kind of how things 
you know, co uh, correlated between the game and real life and was <coughs> really, I mean, really fascinating in terms of like the game with all the events and the combat systems really, really well put together from Ben Madison. Uh, I mean, the first edition won a Charles Itz Roberts award and the second edition. Um, Nate, and I, I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, we would like to get this done sometime today. Can you speed up what you're going to talk about? You bet. You bet. Wow. So anyway, I um, was fascinated. <laughs> quarter to six already, and he's going on and on and on. Let's but go. That's what they do. You invite well, people. Who, you invite people of knowledge, and then moan that they give their no, knowledge. No, I'm just saying. We yeah. don't need a dissertation on it. Just what have you learned? <laughs> See you, Gareth. <laughs> I I learned in this game. Particularly when, like, give an example. In 1916, yeah, see, uh, Eric yeah. von Falkenheim was in charge. Um, the at the beginning of the campaign season, they were trying to determine where they were going to attack for that that year. Uh, what was going to be the major campaign? And they <laughs> they kind of looked at the map and try and were like, "Where can we go?" There's just you know that if we if we go anywhere there's a risk of the other front being being hurt and i i could tell playing death in the trenches that i was feeling that same tension as well yeah. and that's what i i one, one of the reasons i kind of fell in love with that game is because i was getting a sense obviously not the same but getting a sense of what sort of it's like to be in the central powers and that central command of where do we go because anywhere we go, risk the other front getting getting ruined, and so I learned a lot in playing through that game about World War One, and it really helped in making the game feel more historical and alive to me. So you've got more into World War One stuff in the last sort of six. Oh, months. I've been playing World yeah. War One since January. Yeah, which is the last six months. Weirdly, come on the show. So well done. Since he's come on the show. Nate, okay, Esther. number two, can you give it something you've learned in the last six months? Yeah, I think I've not take not 20 to minutes. On, to no, do I it. think I think what yeah, it is, is time not to come on this show again. <laughs> Be careful what I say. Don't mention Kickstarter. Don't um, <laughs> Arada. Arada. I think I've found my sweet spot with operational games. So I know I don't mm. like tactical games. I like strategic games, but I think. For me, operational gaming is where I find most enjoyment. It's taken me a long, it's taken me years to figure this out, but I think like I think that's where I'm going to start focusing much more of my attention mm, on that, so good. that that yeah, Italian, you guys, you Italian regimental that. scale. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, really. That's fair enough. So tactical, you learn. Nope, don't like tactical. I don't like tactical. I really don't like. Like tactical. grand strategic, you like that kind of middle ground, huh? Grand strategic is still fun. Still enjoy it, but. Most, I, think, I think it's, it, it's Marmite or Vegemite in your case. It's either, you know, zoom out up here and have a look or zoom in. Yeah, I, and there's no in between with it, I don't think. All right. It's, just, um, it's, it's, been, it's because of the decisions that I'm making. So with tactical, I don't know, tactical just tends to be move up and attack. Strategic's a bit different. It's really big picture, but stuff like, and I'm, I'm thinking I might get back into OCS. Oh, I just, I'm worried yeah. about the solo. I'm worried about the solo. Tried that. It, but uh, you know, it's it's more divisional, but it's old old school. But everybody, there's a lot of fans for it. Yeah, and it's got that movement, that maneuver <laughs> kind of element. That you, every time you do something, you have to pay, don't you? Um, mm -hmm. Well, you pay for attacks. Yeah, supplies. It's all about logistics, logistics, yeah. supply, those considerations. But with the maneuver. Built in BCS and OCS. I think I'm going to go. I think I'd, I'd try BCS if I had the if I get the yeah. money together because again they're blooming expensive. But yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Great, Ruff. What have you learned in the last six months? I've learned, as we talked about, learned to love a little bit more um, Vassal because of playing with Tony and yourselves and all that. Um, learning to except that, yes, okay, it's there and it does a job and I can play with people that I would never normally be able to play with. So, yes, positive there. The other big thing is um, getting to the Napoleonic Games is something I... I was wondering if you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, it, the Napoleonic Games is something I'm having trouble, like Eastern Front, I'm having trouble getting into for some reason. But what I'm doing is... Um, 
getting into it through a sort of back door of the naval side of it because I like my naval games. So um, I'm getting to know indirectly about land battles through the naval battles mm. and the sort of um, uh, things that uh, uh, England did or Britain did during that um, that part of the world, that part of history. So, yes, get getting books on it, you know, and learning – um, that's that's my big thing. I think is actually there's hope for me to maybe get into some Napoleonic stuff once I've well, I love the naval stuff. You know, getting rough, into it through is, that way. Rough. There is a new seventh edition coming out for War and Peace. Shut up! It yeah. sells out as soon as it comes out. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Uh, all right. So one of the things I learned in the last six months <clears throat> is, uh, well, Ruff had mentioned it just a little bit ago, actually. I've been playing a lot of the Undaunted system and uh, a lot of deck building and stuff. And what I've learned is that wargaming war <laughs> war can use a lot of these mechanics that yeah. – are in regular Euro games and bring That's them cool. into war gaming and make them just as good and make them make them great introductory games for other people to learn how to play them. There are many games. Herman just did Plum I Island say, Horror. Get Mark Herman, get Mark Herman on the phone. Yeah. yeah, he stole a bunch of mechanics from Euros. Yeah. I'm finding that there are more Euro mechanics that are great in war gaming and Undaunted proves you can do it. That's what I learned. Nate, what else did you learn, buddy? Which one? You. Nate, Nate We're one. going around again. We're going around number two. Round oh. two. You know, I learned that <coughs> really a lot of the – and uh, this was something I was thinking about watching, uh, Nathan, your, your War Game Morale uh, video, is that how – important a good graphic design is for a game and how it it can either really make or break your experience in yeah. terms of if that if i have to really spend a lot of time on trying to figure out what thing the symbols and what things mean or if the map is just horrible i'm not going to get immersed into the game and it's going to really destroy my ability to to play it so yeah gr graphic design easily Good point. Good point. See, that was quick. Yeah, that was how you were supposed to do it the first time. Oh, well. Doctor Nate, what's up? What do you got? Anything uh, else for us? Yeah, I'm not. Oh, I used to, I used to oh, struggle with rule books. <laughs> I'm not wasting my time with bad rule books anymore. I, <laughs> I'm, it's it's it because it damages my morale. I I you know if I start to dive in and I don't like it, I'm just going to stop early rather than struggle. So I'm not struggling anymore. I'm not going to give bad rule books the time of day. I used to I used to power through and think, I'll figure this out, but I'm not anymore. I'm going to stop. Ah, um, so you learned there's so two ways too short. Your mind is going to play what you like while you're here. Yeah, well, why, yeah. why struggle with a bad rule book for a game that <clears throat> I'm not certain about when I can just say, no, I'm an hour, two hours, three hours into this. I'm going to stop and move to something more fun that... Yeah. Good, good. Easy. Enjoy good. the learning process. Where's, we need more Jeremy Whites to. Yes. Oh, oh. Now, if I have man. a man crushing anybody, it's Jerry. <laughs> man, that is such a good rule book for Atlantic Chase. Yeah, yeah. Everything he does is is he should he should. I, I think I've said in my he's videos. Taken he should run classes from from Euros and non war ball games. He's, that's the way a lot of non war games are put out, aren't they? The, the sort of breaking it down. And here's well, what we really, he provides so many illustrations, so you can see, you can connect from the written word to the actual what the what's on the board, um, it, which is missing in a lot of war game rules. Yeah, yeah, and and the structured scenarios, and it feels like like mm -hmm. with with um, rough, you you know about um, skies about Britain, that kind of like you're gradually learning bits at a time, and it's like you're enjoying every <laughs> aspect of it. Read my eight, only read. my only problem with that is it's a great rule book, no, but there's one it. bloody uh, raid counter that I don't think it might be me that isn't explained 
quite as well as it should be, unless it's just me. It's the one with the, the raid marker above it and the AA underneath. And they say, or whatever it is, and you do, you, you put off putting the raid marker down. Is that put? Is that the raid marker that you've already put down, or you have to wait? If there's not one there, you do it. So yeah, that's the only thing. Mm. But yeah, apart from that, fantastic rule books. Yeah, but you may be thinking, of, Nathan, when you mentioned because uh, Christoph mentions in the chat about Aaron, the new Aaron armor. It's a hundred and forty-eight page rule book, and I know Kev, people say that there's a lot Kev of has had a moan, Kev has had a moan about that big I, I saw that. I thought I thought it was interesting. I mean, I just. I don't want to spend the time to go through 148 pages. Yeah, I and mean, that was going to be my second point. Ruff, do you have one before I go? That, that's sort of what, <coughs> weirdly what um, uh, the the prof <laughs> has <laughs> said um, is that yes, when I first started this, I will churn mm. through rule books if they're you know, and I know the experience is a lot to be you know taken into account, and I would look on BGG, look at other things, trying to trying to uh, you know work out what's going on and then i'm thinking no as you say life's too short i'm getting on now mm. uh, and the other thing I'm, I'm starting to like is i'm getting back heavily into solo gaming because i think you guys are just a waste of time <laughs> <laughs> no weirdly i love i love the, the you know the solo games some great yeah. solo games coming out so i'm coming away maybe from not entirely. Don't panic. You know, we've been playing there's some great games, but I do like something I can put out and play myself and video, just me, without worrying about uh, playing it two-handed. So that's what I've learned. Great. Well, the last thing I learned in the last six months, and I think <clears> this <throat> is just, uh, I mean, kind of going off of a little bit of what you guys were saying is I cannot sit down and play a game if it's more than two hours. I just can't do it anymore. I don't know. I lose... I don't know if it's my Amy HD or what, but after like an hour and a half to two hours, I could care less about this game. I I, I have no desire to keep playing. I, I don't know if, if it's my cancer or whatever, but I have been oh, no. completely different now than I was a couple years ago when I would play those games. I could sit here for eight hours and play Diablo or whatever on my computer. Well, what about... What about as a YouTuber that you, you know, like how I'm playing Skies Above Britain and the first one was an hour and a half because it had introductions of pilots mm -hmm. and each one's going to be, I suspect, 40, 50 an hour long. So I'm going to play six, seven hours of it, but it's split down into into bits. What about that as a YouTuber? That is, as a YouTuber. I just cannot go more than an hour and a half to two hours as maximum. Yeah, I have I mean, to get up. I mean, yeah. if... if I mean, you'll you'll notice, and even when I'm doing my other videos and they're longer, I'm breaking them up into part one and part two because, yeah, like I said, after an hour and a half, I suddenly care less about the game. I well, just I, don't have the desire to want to fight. Think viewers do after an hour. You know, I mean, some of them have to be an hour, um, but you do it live, so you play it. Maybe you know, maybe you should just do you know playing it live, but then go an hour. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll play the next half or next week. Mm. That's what I'm doing with this. You know, I've done the the first part. I'm videoing the second part, and that'll take me a, a while. As you know, it takes a long time to edit it. Um, but that's how I split it up by doing each patrol okay. separately, mm. rather than sitting doing a live stream. Crikey, I'd, I'd, yeah, lose I'd, just... live. I'd lose the will to live. Yeah, I, I agree. I just don't don't. I well, don't like, get into yeah, it small anymore. Chance, Ian, small like chance, small chance. As a YouTuber yeah. or player, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's just took me forever to try I don't to know play. what it is, but uh, no, I'm with you there. I couldn't video the whole six patrols or 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 a whole OCS game. You'd have to split it up, otherwise you'd end up sort of licking the windows, you know, and uh, you know just running around. Point, uh, earlier today, uh, wise guy, you were probably sleeping, but uh, I played Concordia this morning for the first time ever. Yep. And it was about an hour and 45 minutes. And yep. then we had like a 15 minutes where I did like scoring at the end. Yep. And when I was done, I was like, perfect. This is perfect. What This is exactly what I want out of a game. Yeah, this is what an hour and a half to two hours. I got the whole thing in and I'm happy and I'm done with it. And I can now move on with my it's life. It's a Roman game. Yeah. That's one of our regular Roman themed games, weekly game. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And I just, uh, 
I don't know if it's just the mindset I'm in or whatever. I just... No, but it's no. I mean, I'm. I can't. I can't. You know, the games that will take three, four, five, six videos. I'm not going to do them one after the other because I'd go mad. I I put the the and also with this game as well because it's it's not complex, but there's lots of twiddly bits in it that you forget. So I've got the first one up and I've got a couple of comments back saying, "Ah, oh, you forgot this rough," and I love it where they go, you know, just for future reference. And it's brilliant. So I made made a note that when that crops up again, I'm I'm going to play it. So by the end of the sixth patrol, hopefully I'm playing it absolutely correctly, and people mm. can enjoy it. But I couldn't do it straight through. I couldn't do that, and then start videoing the second patrol. Yeah. Uh, I've got to take a break. I, I thought you were going to gonna mention. I, I really thought you were going to mention about because you assigned people to all the little counters and having that connection now with your game. I thought that was going to be one of the things you would mention. Well, no, it, it's it is great that every and that's making the game actually different to if I'd have played it with just made in up making up names because there are people that I know and their friends, you know, whether they're subscribers or YouTubers. Because uh, by the way, remember we love you all, and there's nothing you can do about it. The fact that I've done that makes it a little. Am I going to go? Am I? Oh God, no! I don't want to do this. I'm dreading the first one that had actually doesn't make it. So uh, you know, it is, almost it, didn't. No, there was a couple. Well, they, they, yeah, but it's only the first, the first patrol. So you know, we'll see. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, just it, so I kind of understand. You know, off, don't you worry. Just so I kind of understand what you're saying about time. Like I, I love in my mind, I love the idea of spending time in a game and just. You know, standing over the table and just looking at everything and strategizing. But then when you're actually in it and it's like, you know, there's a lot of other games that I could play. Do I really want to spend 30, 40 hours on just this one game? And, and yeah, a lot of times there, are, away. But there are people that do and get a great yeah, deal of great. enjoyment by looking, pondering, you know, puffing on the pipe, you know, and walking around, getting a book out and looking and, and that's fantastic. Uh, and I'm lucky that I can leave this out. You know, there are people who can't do that, um, leave the game out until I'm ready to do the next part. You know, and that's what's great about it. It might be a bit of a gap because, again, you've got, you've got editing and then you think, no, I've got – there's an oh, there's an unboxing I can do in between just to take – just to sort of clear the palette, as it were, before I get back to it. So I'm lucky in that way. Um, but, yeah, I, I understand. It's, it's horses for courses. You know, there's – as they used to say, now it's queer as folk. You know, everybody's different, and that's wonderful. I mean, Nathan, I can imagine when you were playing East Front series that that was on your table for quite a while. Yeah, well, I ended up like I only got halfway through the um, Army Group North, and you know, like Ruff was just saying, how long can I how can I leave how long can I really leave this up? Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up packing it up halfway through the campaign, but. Um, I think Army Group Center was up for months, Ooh. and it's a full. It takes up the entire. It's huge. Yeah. Um, you know. How, you know. That, through that whole time, I'm. I actually ended up that that early as well. So I packed up Army Group Center early. Didn't finish that campaign. I reached a point where I'm like, <coughs> yeah, I'm just going to pack it up and try something else. Yeah. It, 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 and also, they're still chatting about it in the chat. You know that. Uh, oh, you were my wingman, meandering. My, oh, yeah, I've got to watch it. You know, so it's a great, great thing. But please bear in mind, it puts a tremendous amount of stress if you get if you disappear yeah. suddenly. You know, so it's quite a. As you know, uh, Nathan, it's it's a it, it's not a kind game. Yeah. Yeah. But I love war it. is war is not a it's not <clears throat> no. friendly to anyone out there. No, sir. But it makes it difficult that uh, there's people I know. So uh, yeah, that, exactly. It's your mates, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why that one, these guys earlier we talked about those deserters, right? They wanted yeah. to go back to their mates because yeah. And there's talking, you know. And there's people like Tweezers. He puts a comment on on the on the video saying, "Oh, thanks. Yeah, I had to spend the night in the pub. Cheers." <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Um, so, I mean, we got to kind of wind down things. We do appreciate Nate coming out tonight and, or this morning for him anyways, and, <laughs> and, uh, enjoying some time with us again. It's great as usual. I've seen the we sun come up behind him. And <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see if it's snowing. It's going to be snowing here. It's, it's our, our winter. Snowing? And the snow was, 
I haven't checked outside, but snow was predicted. Oh, God, for you're morning. upside oh, down. My. You're upside yeah. down to us. Yes. Yeah. I'm, it's it's totally freezing. 92 like degrees on. outside. Yes, yeah, it's like 95 here. No, it was yeah. lovely. A lovely June day. Lovely. I had the back door open. Everything was, oh, it was gorgeous. Sunny, but not too yeah. hot. Let me, I'm just going to yeah. check the Well, anyways, we do appreciate We love your comments. Yeah, um, thanks. Thanks, sir. Uh, we guys, love your insight and everything. Uh, appreciate all your videos you've done on the Simonich games. And if anyone's interested, check out his channel for sure. He does a great job. Um, if uh, we will link it over here, it's just wise, wise guy history, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so before we say goodbye, uh, anyone have an announcement of what they've got going on in their channels? Rough, you got anything coming up? Well, just video. We've well, started videoing part two, so we're doing that for next week. A bit more of that. To see, uh, get that on the uh, the channel as soon as I can. Um, that's about it. I'm enjoying it. It's uh, it's a good game. I mean, I don't know. I've uh, I've got Storm Above the Reich, and I've ordered Skies Above the Reich. Mm. Am I going to be not disappointed? Am I going to think, oh, this isn't as sort of crunchy? It's a different series. It's completely it's different. It's yeah. different. Um, and also, Friday. you got your thing Friday. Oh, and Friday with uh, Tony uh, playing a bit of Musket and Pike. I assume we're playing the English Civil War. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, and wise yeah, guy, yeah, what do you got coming up on your channel? Anything, um, anything good? Uh, so I think Four Blau. I think the next game oh, is oh, going to be Four Blau on Vassal. You don't hold uh, back, Nathan, do you? Crikey. Operation Theseus is going to be. So I've got Four Blau on Vassal, more North Africa forty-one, and Stalingrad forty-two, and Operation Theseus. I hope you enjoy the Theseus. I really do. So, yeah, look, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because mm. Arkham's great and Crossing the Line is great. Same kind of series, but with you know minefields and a couple of things like there's that. Slight, there's some slight differences to it, yeah. yeah. Looking forward to it, of course. You do a great job with everything you do, and um, I'm so glad because your time difference. Yeah, I'm at thanks. work, and I'm bored to death, and I'll get a little message. Wise guy's gone live, and I'm like, yeah, all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn them on, and people come into my office like, uh, who is that talking to you? And I'm like, oh, don't worry about and it. And this is at work, is it, Jester? <laughs> yeah. oh, Why aren't you fired? What's going on? If I was your boss, can I have a word, please, Jester? Yeah, you, yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for coming out. We do appreciate it. Thanks Next week, me. it'll be over on Ross channel. Nate, you won't be here, correct? No, nope, I won't be here. So we'll, uh, we're going to get – Nate. Uh, Ralph will get a substitute for you. We'll get and... somebody – hopefully get somebody in. Uh, I don't want to be just us two because it's like it's a nightmare. Nightmare. So uh, uh... We'll try and get somebody else to, to come in. So uh, just to um, have a chat about stuff. Yeah. Right, exactly. All right, everybody. What should they do before they leave, Ralph? Oh, by the way, if you haven't, because it's jesters, do not bother with the uh, thumbs up, all right? <laughs> Don't do that. Right. No, please, hit that thumbs up just to make sure it's working properly. And if you haven't subscribed to everyone, we need the help. We need it. So Very good. Right. Yeah. So hit that all like. Right. Thanks so much, Thanks, for, everyone. Uh, Nate, and, uh, Nate and Ruff and everyone. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Great show today. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week over on Ruff's channel. Yeah. Take Bye, care, everybody. everyone.